Good Sunday afternoon, everyone. Thanks for tuning in on this Mother's Day Sunday to the Southern Oregon Weather Weekend Update. Uh, I want to start out by putting the warm temperatures that we've seen over the past few days in context. We'll look at our seven-day forecast and talk about the next chance for showers. We'll see what our teleconnections tell us for week two, and then we'll end with the latest trends for the month of June. So yesterday in Medford, we saw a high of 92, which is a whopping 20 degrees above average for this time of year. The record value was 95, and that was set back in 1936. Uh, so we were very close to that record, but um, never quite got that warm. Interestingly, last year we also had some warm temperatures, a high of 86 around this time of year. So just wanted to put that warmth in context. It was well above average, but it wasn't quite record-breaking. So here's our current satellite imagery from NOAA, showing some high clouds over the area. Here's our current 500 millibar map. We're still kind of under the influence of this ridge that has been giving us the heat over the last few days, but you can see this area of troughing approaching. It's sitting just off the coast now. Well, under some southwest flow, we're seeing some clouds start to move in. That's giving us some cooler temperatures for today, and, and our warmth, for now at least, is over. And we're going to talk about why. So first, let's look at our angular momentum. You can see it's positive right now. It's forecast to dip a little bit over the next week or two, but it's still supposed to remain positive. And guys, that's a signal for cooler and wetter conditions over our area. The, the latest batch of showers that we saw before this warmth hit, that was partly due to the positive angular momentum that we were seeing, and it's remained positive. So uh, I, I thought that this would mean our warmth wasn't going to last very long. That ended up being the right call. Um, our, our heat is over for now. So. Let's also look at our PNA because you might be thinking, oh, a positive PNA, doesn't that usually correlate to ridging and warmer and drier conditions over the West Coast? Well, in many months it does, but in May the signal isn't really strong. If anything, it calls for a ridge to set up north of our area, but there isn't really a strong signal for, the, for a positive PNA right now, especially over our part of the state in Southern Oregon. So there are some other factors like the angular momentum and like the Madden-Julian oscillation that are going to override this because it isn't a very strong factor during this time of the year. Uh, we do have a very strongly negative EPO that is going to promote ridging uh, north over Alaska and, and allow that troughing to cut underneath into the west coast. We also have our MJO moving toward phase two. Guys, that's also a signal for this ridging to move farther north and for some form of troughing to set up farther south over the west coast. So all of this uh, leads me to believe that we are in for some cooler and wetter weather. In fact, here is the GEFS ensemble forecast for mid-morning tomorrow. You can see this trough has moved closer to the coast. This ridge has shifted farther north. And guys, the models are pointing toward exactly what our teleconnections and our other signals are hinting at as well. So here's a loop of the GFS, the American model, for the next week. Uh, so this loop goes from tomorrow through next Sunday. So you can see tomorrow, first batch of showers starts around Tuesday, maybe have some showers on Wednesday afternoon as well, a few dry days toward the end of the week, and then another pretty robust batch of showers for the weekend. So again, our first wave moves through sometime on Tuesday, then another Wednesday afternoon, possibly into Thursday, and then ending the week with yet another batch of showers. And you can see some of these showers are, are um, going to be associated with some convective activity. Here's the Storm Prediction Center's Day 3 um, Severe Weather Outlook. And we don't really see a lot of severe weather in Southern Oregon, but these, these green areas here do indicate some, um, some convective activity going on with these showers. So over the higher terrain, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see some puffy cumulus clouds developing and then uh, maybe some thunder and lightning with some of these showers as we get into the middle of the week. Also, another interesting thing to note in contrast to the heat that we've been seeing is the snowfall. Because here, by 
early Wednesday morning, the California Nevada River Forecasting Center is calling for freezing levels to be around 5,500 feet for, for the Siskiyous and the Southern Oregon Cascades. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see possibly some flakes down to that level and heavier showers, maybe some grouple and small hail lower, maybe to 4,500 feet in heavier showers. Sometimes the snow level can drop as much as 1,000 feet below the freezing level in heavier showers. I know it is May. It's going to be difficult for any snow that falls to stick around. But nevertheless, uh, the National Weather Service is calling for up to 3 to 4 inches at Crater Lake uh, by Wednesday. Whether that accumulates to three to four inches on top of the existing snow that's still there. That remains to be seen. I suspect this will come in batches of heavier showers, maybe melt a little in between. But but be prepared if um, if you're venturing into the higher terrain midweek, be prepared for some snow and once again, possibly some thunder and convective activity as well. So here's all that information summarized by the Weather Channel's 10-day forecast. I'm just showing you a week. Um, here we have very slight chance of showers um, today and maybe a slightly greater chance for showers tomorrow but the real action starts tuesday then wednesday mainly wednesday afternoon and overnight into thursday and then you can see that third round of showers for the weekend pretty hefty seven day totals for mid-may according to the wpc uh, you can see for the rogue valley this will all add up to between a quarter and a half of an inch and for the mountains, possibly an inch or more of liquid precipitation. So quite a bit for the middle of May. And I think this will largely be beneficial. Here is the latest map from the U.S. Drought Monitor. And you, you can see we're currently under a, a Category 3 extreme drought. And, and so I think the rain is largely going to be beneficial. We've talked about how rain during the springtime can actually increase fire risk because it promotes the growth of, bra of grasses and brush. But I think we're at the point now in the year where any rain we can get is going to be beneficial, especially considering that drought. Here was the, the monster fire season of 2018 for, for California. I'm going to consider California here because we get a lot of our smoke impacts from California fires here in Southern Oregon. So here you can see for the month of April in 2018, it was very wet over Northern California. And then for the month of May, it started to dry out and warm up and, and that helped create a lot of um, dry fuels, dry grass and brush. By contrast, last year, which was not a very active fire season, saw kind of a, a more average uh, rainfall pattern over northern California during April and then it got wet in May and I think that helps suppress a lot of the fire activity so the bottom line here is that um, there are greater concerns for rainfall in in April um, than there are in May rainfall in May is is more beneficial especially as we get later into the month because it really helps tamp down uh, any fire activity so what can we expect after this week of on and off showers? Well, here's day 10 on all three of the major ensembles, the US, the Canadian, and the European. They're all keeping some form of troughing over the western part of the United States and, and building a ridge over the Great Lakes. So there's really good agreement here that we could see some showers stick around into week two. The angular momentum still forecast to be positive. That's still a signal for troughing cooler and wetter conditions during May for our area. Um, the PNA is forecast to drop a little bit over the next 10 days, even though that, that isn't a huge signal for our area during this time of year. That would certainly help to promote more of that troughing along the West Coast, uh, if even just a little bit. Here is the Canadian Ensemble for day 16, and you can see as we move toward the end of week two, the Canadian wants to start to to bring this ridge farther south again and park it over our area. This is very similar to MJO Phase 5, and I think the, the Canadian, what it wants to do is move that MJO from Phase 2, which is where we're going over the next few days, through Phases 3 and 4 and into Phase 5, because this pattern looks very similar to MJO Phase 5. However, I don't really think that's going to happen uh, for a couple of reasons, and one of them is that we're starting to see a more La Nina-like pattern with stronger easterly winds. 
And those easterly winds can sometimes um, or, or often prevent the MJO from pushing farther east into those phases five, six, and seven. I think this is going to uh, mean that the MJO is going to uh, stay in phase two, uh, which would bring this troughing a little bit farther back and bring it a little bit closer to our area. So we wouldn't come as much under the influence of this ridge. Uh, so all that to say, the cooler pattern that we could um, that, that we we're going to see this week could stick around into week two as well. Um, and once again, uh, there's that positive angular momentum. Now, what does this mean going into June? Well, last week um, I talked about how the signals for June were getting a little bit more mixed. Um, the angular momentum wasn't as far negative on the models as it had been, and that trend has continued. And the CFSP2 has continued to bump up the angular momentum for its June forecast. And a positive angular momentum leads to this kind of a signal during June, with the ridge parked over the Pacific Northwest, maybe some troughing to the south. So we'll have to watch how the angular momentum forecast evolves. But right now, some of the, some of the ensemble members are little bit negative and some of them are positive so really not a super strong signal right now we do have the Enzo 3.4 region continuing to cool we're seeing those cooler subsurface waters rise to the surface but you can see um, a, a little bit frustratingly <laughs> they have kind of started to level off around neutral and if that continues um, into June that's not a really strong signal for for June either Here's the correlation with those Nino 3.4 temperatures. Again, ab above normal temperatures in that area of the Pacific Ocean leads to ridging. Um, and so we're just going to have to see if those waters keep cooling. If they stay neutral, then June could be more of a mixed bag. If they cool to below average, that's just a cooler and wetter signal for June. The models continue to hint at a at a cooler and wetter June, so I think they're anticipating that those Nino 3.4 waters will continue to cool and that we'll maybe see some negative angular momentum tendencies as well. So we'll just have to keep an eye on, on this. Just to recap all of the information we discussed, our heat wave for the middle of, of May is going to be over for a while. Um, we will see showers return midweek Tuesday, Wednesday afternoon into Thursday, and then probably for the weekend as well. I would watch for some snow over the higher terrain and possibly uh, some thunder as well, some hail. We might have a few drier days late week, and then it looks like more showers will return for Saturday afternoon into Sunday. Uh, we do have our teleconnection suggesting that those cooler and cloudy conditions could hang around during week two. There definitely aren't any signals for really unseasonable heat during week two. As we're still thinking about June, there aren't uh, as many cooler and wetter signals as there were maybe a week or two ago in the models, but there isn't really any evidence for hotter and drier than normal conditions either. So we'll have to keep an eye on June. Right now, I would still anticipate June being a little bit cooler and wetter than normal, at least to start off the month. Guys, thanks so much for listening. Don't forget to set your notifications so you can receive that summary next week as soon as it arrives. And uh, please leave a like if you enjoyed the forecast.